My name is uh, Jim Wool and we're here today to talk about checkboxes and radio buttons. So in Visual Studio we've got uh, the project that we created in uh, episode 2 with a simple wizard with a, a title, a middle and a finish page. So let's add a radio button. Now then if we want to add more than one at a time we can hit control and then radio button and we can add another two, three, four. All right, so now we've got four radio buttons. Uh, obviously, we want them to all say something slightly differently, different. So let's uh, say we're going to pick. We've got a lot of different hypervisor platforms in our uh, environment, and we want to pick um, different uh, uh, different hypervisors to address. So first one, let's say this is Citrix Center. We don't want the uh, return in there. And then if we want, we can have Hyper-V. And we can have ESXi. And let's do KVM here. Doesn't matter what, what's in here at all. All right, so let's just save that. And if we go uh, back to our ID, a quick word on this. On the previous two episodes, I've been using um, the default PowerShell ISC. Uh, that's not what I usually use. I usually use um, Visual Studio Code in Sour Edition with the PowerShell add-in. Uh, so I thought I'd change from using the, the ISC to, to VS Code. So if we have a look here, uh, all this code, as always, is available on uh, on GitHub. So this code here is the function that we defined before to import XAML and create Windows objects. And there is our next and back buttons for uh, for the for the pages, exactly as it was in the previous one. So let's show the GUI just using that code, and we can see now we've got all four buttons. Good. So we want to do something else. So we can what we can do is if we've got four buttons on uh, a page, but we actually want two sets of two, we can actually group them. So let's do uh, give this a group simply one. And we'll save that and let's run again. And now we've got two different groups of radio buttons. We can also separate, th separate them out a different way. So if we take the group name off here, and let's add a grid in, just as something that can contain uh, different items. Um, oops, let's see if we can do this properly. Apparently not, so let's do it one at a time. Do Alt to place in the grid. Alt to place in the grid. And then we can move this up to there. Alright. So we ungroup them, but we put them in a different uh, area of the XAML tree. So now we can see this is indented here, and we can see this inside the grid. So if we run the code again, and now we see even though that they are uh, in the same group or undefined group, because they're in a, a different position in, in the tree, then um, essentially we can um, separate them out. Now, if for whatever reason you want to bring them back in, we can now call them all the same group name. And as usual, the stuff we, can, we, we have in the GUI, we can change in the XAML. to effectively give them all the same group. So now again, if we have a look in the UI, now we're back all in the same group. All right. So if you're wondering how things should look in the Microsoft way, uh, I just want to talk about the Microsoft design guidelines. And uh, Microsoft produce a, a a very detailed set of design guidelines 
for all windows UIs. Now obviously this may be times where you don't want to follow these, but usually if you want to blend in with the normal windows look you do. Let's have a look at radio buttons and we can see here that there's a lot of uh, help on sizing, spacing, documentation. Uh, here it says when possible format the label using bold text. All right. So if I want to tie in with uh, with Microsoft's guidelines, then effectively let's go to text and we'll make it bold. And we'll just do the simple thing here and copy and paste so we don't have to click about too much. Oh wait, bold for all of those. And let's just knit back and check that that has been replicated in the actual GUI and it has. All right. Now then, that's just GUI stuff. That's not actually doing anything behind. So let's have a look, quick look at the uh, the code behind here. Now, one of the first things I want to talk about is automatic variables. So this is an event, just like we had an event before with buttons, and it's radio button add checked. And we can see in Visual Studio, if we highlight a radio button, we go to the events and we have checked right here. So what we would what do we want to do when we have uh, that radio button checked? Well, let's see what um, Windows is doing for us under the hood. Within each event, there's two automatic variables. One is this and the other one is dollar underscore. Now then, <coughs> we can take advantage of some of these automatic variables to do some interesting things. So if we have a look in, um, uh, so all I've done here is export this and dollar underscore to an XML file here. So if we just uh, import that with, uh, run that line with F8, and let's get DU as well, dollar underscore. Now this is effectively the current object properties. So we can see this particular one, the Zen server, is checked, is true. Now what else can we tell from this? So we can say dot content just brings out the name. But we can also see what the parent name is. So the parent name is when you have a look inside the XML file. And this radio button's parent is here, grid title page. And we can see that the, uh, the title page is, is there. So you can walk the XAML path using this, uh, uh, this auto-generated object. And if we have a look you can also see what are the other children. So we can see that that title page also has two buttons. That grid we put in earlier. Now that grid's children will be the other two radio buttons. So we can we can see the organization of the of the GUI and the controls by using this. And if you have a look at the, the DU one. So let's just clear the screen before we do that. So if we look at the DU, now this tells you about the event that's happening. Now, for this particular video, we're not going to worry about that too much, but just realize it's there for, for future use. All right, let's have a quick look at checkboxes. So we go and we'll, let's add some uh, checkboxes. One, two, three. All right, and let's say we want to have a look at CPU across our Zen server, Hyper-V, etc. environment. Maybe we want to have a look at memory, and maybe we want to have a look at disk. Um, oh, I just missed a bit. So when we're talking about uh, these automatic variables, what we can do is do some interesting things. So if we uncomment that and let's comment this out again. So we can now say, 
that we've got a single finish text block on the finish page and when I add a check to that radio button I want to change the content to whatever the um, radio button text is so if I pick Zen server and hit next and next we can see we have Zen server Let's pick Hyper-V next next that same text block is now etc etc so it's a good way of just entering your information once so uh, you can pick the, the this automatic variable and uh, add it into whatever else you want and in this case I'm just adding it into this single hypervisor text block all right so we just added uh, three checkboxes in and we can have a look at uh, some code that we're, we're doing there now for the radio buttons we only needed the add checked event because they're mutually exclusive we don't need to do anything when you check something else because we can do the action on just check Ray, uh, check boxes don't do uh, don't form a group there it's individual things so what we have to do is effectively we have to have a add checked event and if you deselect it an add unchecked event so I've got an add checked and an add unchecked for each of these three checkboxes so let's just save this and we'll go back and now we can see now we have the CPU memory and disk we have our Zen server highlighted so let's highlight the CPU we now we can see another text block is CPU memory etc etc and then what should happen is that they disappear once I uncheck that again Microsoft design guidelines can help you out with how these should look um, so there's a problem with what I've just done and the problem is is that when we launch this nothing is selected and we can just go next whenever we like now when you're designing a GUI if you want something to be selected you can either set up defaults or you can disable and enable this next button depending on whether uh, something is, uh, is selected so we're not look at disable and enable in this session but what we will look is setting up a default and <coughs> with these radio buttons all our events are on add checked so to set up a default we need to do two things we need to say that it is checked now you can do this in code as well or you can do it in XAML it's up to you but I'm going to do it in, uh, in XAML and say that this is checked by default but loading this up will not trigger the event is checked because we're not actually clicking on it so that event won't fire so what we need to do is we need to effectively set up the default before we run into the code to add checked so now we've done this if we have a look we have Zen server already checked and hopefully uh, we don't get that so I've done something wrong here so let me just pause the recording where I sort that out all right so the issue there was that I had dot text instead of dot content and if we have a look in Visual Studio we can see that the actual thing should be dot content here there is no dot text on this particular control so now if we run it now we have the default is Zen server and we end up with the Zen server selected and if we change it now we change to Hyper-V so it's important to set up defaults for your user so that uh, so that what you intend is the most likely thing to happen then uh, you've already set up for them we will in, a, in another uh, episode go into uh, enabling disabling and, uh, and uh, what the dollar underscore uh, event means as well anyway thank you for listening and have fun with your GUIs.